Hello, my name is Sweenus, and in this tutorial, I'm going to cover compute shaders along with how to upload data to the GPU and then download it from the GPU, as well as indirect dispatch. Similar to the previous video, I won't go into too much detail over how compute shaders themselves work. This is more just a quick get you up and running for those who already know how compute shaders work. So I won't be discussing how thread groups work and wave intrinsics and things like that. I won't be going over how to set up a lot of things as most of it is the same as in the pixel shader but the parts that are in the scene view extension and then the binding of the shader itself those will be what's covered as those will be where the main differences are. I will also go over the shader itself as well. The effect this time will be twofold. Uh, the first step will be to take several colors of our choosing and then replace them with other colors, which will work similar to how things work in the pixel shader, but with compute shaders. And then the next step will be to take any pixels with a lightness below a certain level and then just make it grayscale. With the second shader being called via indirect dispatch. And as always, if you want to get straight to the code, you can find a link to the GitHub repo in the description. I'm going to start from the shader and work my way backwards to the scene view extension CPP to help give an idea of how things connect better. Starting at the top, I'm going to skip all the includes and that since they're already covered. We have our F color replace struct. So this will be the data structure that will be passing in to select which color is to replace, how perceptually similar the colors, the pixels themselves need to be for them to replace, and then the target color that we want to replace them with. So now after that we've got our color count and that's how many of the replacements we will be doing since we'll need to iterate through a for loop. Followed by our scene color texture which again is going to be our scene color with lighting applied set to writable so we can output a result to it and then following that we have our structured buffer. It's a read only buffer since we don't actually need to write anything we just need to read from it and we will be uploading an array of color replace structs to this buffer. After that we've got our writable structured buffer, the color replacement count. I'll use this to explain how to download data from the GPU and then after that we've got the writable byte address buffer, execute indirect buffer. I'll be setting values in this for the indirect compute dispatch. Now on to our first compute shader. So we've start off with our number of threads for each group and these threads X and threads Y will be set later on in the F global shader class. And our inputs are the current dispatch thread ID and the current group thread ID. After that, we have our scene color that we sample directly from our scene texture, and then we convert it to HSL. Then like in the pixel shader, we've got our defines depending on whether we want to use the lit scene view or the unlit scene view. And here I've got a Boolean for an early exit in the loop, and then uh, I've got a temporary variable for our output. And then our for loop, we're going to iterate through all of our color replaces, test them against the current pixel using the delta E2000 function like before. If it's within the tolerances, I'm going to lerp based on how close it is to the actual value. So if it's zero, it'll be completely lerped to the replacement color. And if it's one, it'll just maintain its own color. And then we atomically add to the replacement count, set change to true and break out of the loop. Then if it's changed, we set the color and make sure the value is between zero and one. And then in this last part, in the if statement, I've got it set to only run on the very first thread. So it'll only ever run once. I get the dimensions of our texture and then I perform some calculations. So in the next function that we'll call for indirect dispatch, though the thread groups will be of size 16 by 16. And since we're doing it over the entire image, we just take our image dimensions and divide it by the size of the group, round it up to the nearest whole number. And after that, we set the necessary parameters in the byte buffer. Looking at our next shader, this is the one that will be called indirectly. It's just a simple shader. We get the scene color again, convert it to HSL. And then if the lightness component is below 15% or 0.15, then we convert it to grayscale and output the result. 
Moving to the CPP side of things, I'm now going to implement the global shader class. At the top, we have some constants. These are what's going to be used to set the defines in the shader. And then we have the same as what's in the shader itself, F color replace with an F vector 3F instead of a float 3 and float as you might expect. And following that, we have our parameter struct and this is for the first shader. So we've got our color count integer and then we have our texture UAV. And these all map to whatever's in the shaders and it pretty much works the same way as it would for the pixel shaders. The UAV seems to be a bit different. Generally speaking, from what I understand, it's for the compute shader only, but there is a UAV pass available in the pixel shader utils. And then for the shader class itself, like before, declare, set parameter type, and then use the shade use parameter struct macro, and then show compile function. And then where it's slightly different is in the modify compilation environment. Since we're using UAVs, we're gonna make sure we add this flag to the compiler flags. And then we have our defined set then for the shader itself. And likewise, for the indirect compute, since we've only got one input output, that's all we need. And pretty much all the same thing. And the implement shader type macros are set like so. And this time, instead of SF underscore pixel, we've got SF underscore compute. And now we're going to head into the scene view extension, but before I go into the CPP, I'm just going to show you the header as there is a slight difference. So at the top, we've got our readback pointer and then we've got an array for the color replacement counts. This is so that the value isn't lost on each frame. Then I've also included the destructor as well. So moving into the actual CPP, we've got two draw call stats. You'll see how they will be set up. And then I've got a, another namespace for some helper functions this time around. I'm pre-computing some of the values so it's not repeated over and over again on the shader side. Now I'll help the performance of it. So we've got our RGB to XYZ, XYZ to lab, then RGB to a lab, combining those together, and then RGB to HSL. In the constructor, then we create our readback object. Since we are creating an object using the new keyword, we are going to make sure that we're deleting the actual data as well afterwards in the destructor. Now, like before, we're using the pre post process pass. The beginning is pretty much the same, except we've got this expression to figure out whether or not we want to use async compute. Now we've got our first stat scope declared. And then below that, we've got all our buffers that we'll be using. And then we're going to get our scene textures. Like before, the top one is for the unlit scene view. And then after that, we're going to get our lit scene view. And I want to assign it to the UAV buffer as well, since we are going to be reading and writing to it. Following that, we've got our temporary color replacement array. So we've just got three sets to work with. We're going to look for red and then change it to blue, look for blue, change it to green, and then look for green and change it to red. And our perception threshold is 10. So anything less than 10 is what will get changed. So to upload this data, we're going to need to create a structured buffer. Now this function itself includes the necessary components needed to set the upload. So I'm going to go into it to show you what you need to do. So the first step is to create the buffer. And then once that is done, you can call the QBuffer upload function and then make sure all your information is set properly and then that'll set everything for you. So this is just a helpful function to make it faster. And this buffer is what we're going to use for downloading information from the GPU. So we're going to create the buffer and then we're going to create the UAV. And then for the indirect dispatch, create the buffer description. Once we've created the buffer description, we're going to want to make sure we've added these two flags. The first is to highlight that we're using the byte address buffer. And then the second is to highlight that we're using it for the indirect dispatch. And then we create the buffer and the UAV. Once those are all set up, we can set them to our parameters that will be used for the shader. And I want to point out that for the color replacement data buffer, since the data buffer itself doesn't need to be written to, we can just use a SRV. So it's read only, and this will make sure we're not adding any unnecessary overhead. Now here's where it starts getting really different from the pixel shader. So instead of using the viewport size, which will be your 1080p or your 1920 by 1080, we need to set the group count. Now there is a nice useful helper function to do that, where all we need to do is put in the thread count. And because we're using a, and because we're doing a screen pass, we can basically use the actual viewport size or the resolution. And then what will happen is that it'll divide the group count by the thread count, same as in the shader basically, to get the total group count. And then we're going to use the compute shader utils instead of pixel shader utils to add a pass. Before I used a struct for the name, 
but you can also use this macro and it also allows you to then format the text with other data. So here I've got one and then below you'll see I'll have two as well. And it's got the path type is compute, our shader, parameters and group count. Next part is going to download the data. So what you can see we've actually got a code block and then inside we've got another stat scope. And what that'll do is it'll create a visual hierarchy of your stats. So the first thing we need is to calculate the number of bytes we're actually going to download, which is pretty simple. We're just going to use the number of replacements to be made. So that's a integer times three. Then we're going to call the add and queue copy pass. And then we're going to make sure we set our readback object, the count buffer that we're actually using to store the data in on the GPU and then number of bytes that we need to copy down to the CPU. Now I'm not 100% sure when the data gets downloaded from the GPU but I have seen this part put into an async function so you can get it whenever otherwise it should be ready the next time this function gets called. So I'm going to empty the color replacement counts array so we can start from scratch and to get the data we call the lock function on the readback object passing in the number of bytes which gives us the pointer to the first element of the array and we copy those values into our array and then we call the unlock function. Next we're going to go over the indirect compute. So the parameters this time are fairly simple. We've just got the scene color texture which is the UAV. And then I'm going to create a flagged enum. So depending on if it's a sync compute or not I'm going to use either or. You cannot use both. I believe it throws an error. Then we get the shader and then our indirect argument offset. So like I mentioned before instead of using a helper function we're just going to call the add pass on the graph builder itself passing in the macro with our two added to the name and then our parameters to pass flags. And then this is how it's done throughout the engine is that we just pass in the Lambda and then inside that we can call it dispatch indirect, passing in all the information we need. And that's pretty much it. And that's all for this video. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna cover render targets. More specifically, I'll be covering how you can take something from your pixel or compute shader and get it onto a render target asset in the editor that you can then use in your materials. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching.